with everybody. We had uh, a special program planned and half of our people had catastrophes that they had to take care of. So our two ladies decided that they needed to drop out. Now I have no idea if this had anything to do with Mother's Day or not. Uh, one is a mother, one at least has a mother, but we, we do know that family issues come up from time to time. And we're sorry to lose them for today, but we'll carry on and we are going to actually postpone the itinerary of what we were going to do today because I don't I don't want to waste the hour on something that that uh, is way too hit and miss and I can't highlight the two ladies along with the rest of us that I want to that makes it pretty much a, a waste so um, we're, we're not going to waste it we are going to just basically occupy your time with another kind of waste and talk to you about other subjects in the meantime to kind of pass the hour and uh, Saturday morning, Marketing Smarties, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us, and I hope you're having a nice Mother's Day weekend. Uh, brief discussion about mothers since it is that weekend, okay? Uh, now my, my mother lives in uh, a little town called Clovis, and I have absolutely no hopes that she'll be watching this right now because her technological uh, opportunities where she, uh, where, where she lives are very slim and narrow and hard to negotiate. So I may have to copy this onto a DVD or a, a video tape. Uh, believe it or not, technology is a little bit behind where they are. But um, it could be that uh, a thumb drive or something like that could get the show delivered a week late. So that's probably how I will have to handle it. But uh, either way, we're dedicating to this to mothers, so I'm saying hi to my mom, and also my sister, who uh, my mother lives with, and also my wife, who is the, a wonderful mother, and those are the three angels in my life. So that being considered, uh, if I sit here and think of it long enough, I start thinking about all the people who I know are mothers and must be fantastic mothers. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to say we're dedicating the show to mothers. And that's the, the the background thinking of what uh, we're all about this weekend. So we're not we didn't really plan a schedule for today. We talked about a few things that we could fill in with, and they will be indeed some interesting things. There we've been talking about videography, videos, YouTube, and Hangouts for almost a month now in various in various ways. So I'm going to turn it over briefly to Terry. Uh, Lee Britton, who can introduce himself and also tell you a little bit of an introduction about what he's going to uh, hand you as a YouTube educational this morning. Go ahead, Terry. Yeah, well, uh, I told uh, Roland that, heck, uh, just a mere tour of my YouTube channel could fill an hour. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're going to we're going to go with that. And because uh, as I've completely fleshed out my YouTube channel and uh, so I can show how how that's done and uh, oh, I just saw everything freeze up as oh my gosh everything's going crazy on my computer what's going on here all right ah oh I see 30 comments suddenly came in at once and it froze up my computer because I have the comments open here <laughs> so, oh wow oh, great. well but uh so anyway, yeah, I, I did. Um, I went through the whole process that YouTube kind of walks you through, and I really could do even more. Uh, in fact, they've got a whole ton of channel tips showing on the page <laughs> that are more things I could do. But the main thing is, is that I created a bunch of playlists because I have videos on so many different subjects. So I created a lot of playlists, and uh, and I put them. Uh, displayed on the channel so that you can see them. So you want me to go ahead and load in that thing and I can give a tour? Yeah, let's do it in one second. I just okay. realized something, Terry, and then, then you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of fun that we can do this because you and me talking, we don't have to worry about uh, the exchange quite so, so much. But I made a comment in the comment stream uh, at a, hmm, half an hour ago or so. And then all of a sudden, a few minutes before the hour, ten, you know, ten about ten minutes till eight minutes till, there's Bill Graham followed by Lon McClure, followed by Barbara Quick, 
Happy Mother's Day, Barbara. And Bill, she's not, no, she's not my mother, but she is a mother. And she's a fantastic mother. Bill Graham, Carmen Mandich, John Clays, Christy Lambert, Glenn Jewett, Jim Sharp, Andrew Hatchett is here. Oh my God. I mean, all these people have posted in the last eight, 10 minutes or so. Mm hmm. Twitch. And, uh, uh, and with us, and we are going to make the best of our day here, but uh, we can also say, I can see the comment stream and I will be paying some attention to it as Terry takes you folks through his uh, YouTube expose. So if there's something critical, I'll, ha I'll try to feed that in. But comment tracker is not working for me. And uh, we were not able to get it going. So that being the case, we're going to have to makeshift that a little bit. But we'll have fun. I just really am impressed by the comment stream coming in. Everyone's commenting. Thank you very much. Yes. Here, and we're kind of winging it with the comment tracker. Instead, we're doing uh, this type of a thing where I'm sharing a screen that has a window open. To which, Andrew, I talk about saying I can talk uh, for an hour about my YouTube channel, and Andrew Hatchett says, only one hour? So, yes, I get, I, uh, the most I could possibly talk about it, I, I'm sure. it's I just will run out of things to say because, you know. But anyway, but let, <laughs> let's go ahead and I'll show my, comment, my, uh, my YouTube channel here. I've got it open. I had to... Uh, presence of mind to actually open a few windows so I could share some stuff with you so okay so uh so this is my channel and uh, uh yeah no great art this is sta this one of the standard art things that they offer you at YouTube I didn't even make my own custom art but you really should put some kind of cover art in the top here because these are the little check check off things that give you cred over at YouTube <laughs> definitely have a a photo of yourself, okay? And uh, because, you know, just like you don't want blue head for your uh, profile picture, you don't want a blue head for the profile pic in YouTube either. And remember, it's the second largest uh, search engine in the world, so you want people to see your gorgeous face. And I recommend a face uh, rather than an icon or a a lot of people like to to represent themselves with some kind of branding thing. I would definitely recommend using your face, putting your face up there, because people connect with faces, not with graphics. Uh, graphics are great for brand recognition and stuff, but I would put the graphic in the header, uh, not in the profile pic. Also, so, uh, Terry, I think that they could spend some time on that other image instead of the packaging, as you were saying. Mm -hmm. They can they can use it wisely to brand themselves and. Uh, you know, you, you give some really good tutorials on how to use Pixlr and stuff. And yep. that gives the right sizing and the right shape and some interesting stuff to develop a good header for their YouTube channel, along with Google Plus and so forth. Exactly. In fact, I have at Pixlr Templates, I have these exact sizes uh, where you just click on the link and it takes you into Pixlr to edit it and... Uh, and create the the correct size so that you can upload it already sized correctly to YouTube. Okay, and uh, but as you see, see there's, there's the playlist section, and uh, and I'm gonna let's just view this as as a uh, new visitor since you're probably not subscribed to my channel yet. But okay, so this is how a channel looks to others. Great, and. Um, I'm not sure if done. What done? Oh, I shouldn't have hit done. There we go. So this is, they let you view it as a new visitor, what a new visitor will see. So a new visitor will see, as you can see, a different thing than what we saw a second ago. It gets, a, I have a welcome to my channel video. And then my various uh, playlists with the uploads one being first that shows the most recent uploads. Then my tech show, Terry's tech show archives. And you can put these in any order you want. You can move them around. But the, I did the, the uh, sideways scroll version for the Terry's tech show. And then you get to the end, you view some more. And it takes you into a, the actual playlist. And uh, I'll just open that in another tab. And, uh, and, and then you can go back and forth. So this... I put a lot of tech show things in here. I put my live conceptual music shows 
in here that I did last year, my open broadcaster software. And again, you see I'm using the sideways scroll predominantly as the top ones. But then it switches to a different type of presentation, the hot items one. Rather than showcasing each, these, each one of these are playlists, just like these up here are playlists. But rather than doing it as a side scroller, it gives you a link that takes you into the playlist. And this is what a playlist looks like. Okay, so here's the Terry's Tech Show, and it shows the different items in the playlist. So when you get to that point where you've gotten to the end of the side scroller and it tells you see more, you click that link, this is what it takes you into is a listing like this. You don't have any control over the look of this list. Uh, the user, I think, has some control. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, you don't have a, a, a control over the display. But um, but anyway, so that's the that's the idea behind that. The hot, a hot items list is actually a list of lists. It's a list of playlists that you can group together in this kind of a format instead. Or you can have, so these are playlists grouped in a list like that. This one, the how to use Camp Studio tutorials, is a list, but of videos, instead of being a side scroller presentation of the videos, it simply has them in a list based, uh, I think they're ordered in terms of most popular to least popular, and you can click a show more button to make it expand and show the rest of the videos in there, and then you can click again and show 15 more. So wow. this, is, this is all selectable stuff that you can do for your channel, okay? And, so uh, these are the things that you basically can decide to use and integrate into the functionality of your channel, right? Yes, into how it's going to look. Oh, and by Oops. the way, uh, Andrew Hatchett says he understands why comment tracker's not working. It's visiting its mother, and it's unavailable today. Oh, I should have known. And then the reason that most people may not be listening is that they're totally caught up and looking at Carmen Mandich's icon, whatever her uh, avatar is, and uh, that's very mm -hmm. distracting. So, yeah, <laughs> just, just want to let you know that you've been, you've been challenged for the uh, the podium. Yes, yeah, she has her avatar. She says that that, that kitty cat is uh, yeah combines as the face and the personality. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. So uh, I'm glad everybody's having a, a, a great Saturday, and uh, we'll keep it relaxed today. I know we focus on uh, education, but uh, we're not going to worry about it so much today. But if we give you something that you have questions on, uh, Terry Terry Lee can answer just about anything that you ask about YouTube. So we'll keep that in mind and get back to you. Whether or not we can achieve that in the exchange and the conversation with without comment tracker or not it doesn't matter. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you. But uh, so this kind of laying out thing that you can do is, uh, is just fantastic that you have so much control over the presentation. I think you have 10 of these fields, like the other videos field, you know, the conceptual music show. You have 10 of these that you can decide how you're going to put it in a slot. And uh, so you see I have presentation. Look at this. It's on the Smarty Show. So, you know, I add uh, when I'm on other people's shows, I add uh, to a, this playlist. I have the game shows playlist. And uh, so it's easy. You just go watch the video and you click on add to and it you select which playlist you want to add it to. And bingo, it shows up in this in your playlist. OK, so now, as you see, I have so many darn playlists that I, just had, I was hit with an enigma because I had far more playlists than I could have individual slots. So that's why I use this clumping technique of clumping playlists together into the slots, like the other videos slot where I show more. And these are all playlists in here that have more of the less watched type things or things where I just made just a few videos on that subject for a particular person or to answer somebody's question. And, uh, and then I threw it in a playlist so other people could watch it. So uh, well, I'm a little hurt. I've seen, I've seen pictures of Karen and Molly, but none of me yet. <laughs> yes, you're in there. 
okay, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> now, you saw that we just saw it at what a new visitor saw. They saw an introductory video that you can make. And uh, oh, I'll go ahead and show that again in case it, I just moved on too fast. So you see, this is what this is. There you go. So you see, you have the welcome to my channel text in here. You have a little video that comes up and uh, it, that tells you what the channel's about. You just make a quick video and you throw it into your YouTube thing and you add it to this when you're making this thing. So, so this is kind of how to get people to subscribe, to introduce them to what it's about. It shows your other featured channels over here. You have pretty much little control over the popular channels on YouTube, what they're going to put over here. But, uh, but they constantly nag you if you don't put it there. You'll, every time you come to your channel, they'll come up with the pop-up saying, your channel stinks because you don't have the popular channels on YouTube list showing. So, so I just finally succumbed and put it up there to get rid of the nag screen. And, uh, but then if somebody did subscribe or if you go to your channel, then you see instead of the video, you see the what to watch next. Okay, and uh, and that includes a list of your most recent and the the uh, selection of ones that happened uh, recently. So it's kind of in reverse chronology that they show the most recent, similar to the same videos that are in the uploads down here. But it helps act as a feature. Okay, so here you have the re for returning visitors and for new visitors. I forgot about this tab existing. So this is what new visitors see. This is what returning visitors who are subscribers see. All right, so that's kind of cool because people can just come to your channel. Now, even though you put a lot of work into your channel, though, it doesn't really, statistically, it doesn't get a million people come to your channel. You don't get tons of subscribers. I mean, really, let's get real. You don't. I have the same number of subscribers on YouTube, about 1,500, as I do on my Google+. Plus. Okay, but these are all people that ha are good because they're just like in Google Plus. They're following your post. They get it in their stream. They 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 get a notification when you've added something new, and uh, so it's they're they're people to respect because they're really following you because they're interested in the subject material you're doing and they've taken the time to subscribe to get notifications, and that's part of why when I get comments coming in to any of my videos, I respond as soon as I see it come up in my notifications. I check my notifications when I sit down at the computer. If I see a, especially a YouTube one, that gets answered first. And I answer their questions. And so if you're doing how-to videos, I recommend you do the same type of thing. Um, now I'll take you into where the, uh, the actual editor portion of this thing is perhaps. Uh, I could do it that way. Well, you have these little, the way you edit your, your page is they have these little pencil icons. I'm not sure you can see those. Let me just start up uh, my Zoom It tool. All right, so you have this little pencil icon. You see that? And uh, you click on that, and it lets you edit a few of the things that are in that area. Now, to get your link for your, your uh, terrybritain.com, your G+, you have to verify your your web page, and you can verify multiple web pages, and uh, your Google Plus uh, thing shows up there automatically if you've linked your YouTube with a with your page, which you so normally you is done. you can verify more than one web page. I did not know that because at one time it was like one. Yeah, I thought it was only one, but uh, I was reminded that if you go into Webmaster Tools, uh, that you can verify more than one. And now I don't, I'm sorry, I'd like to credit the person that told me that. I think it might have been Molly. Uh, but I'm not sure. But anyway, but uh, yeah, if you go into Webmaster Tools, you can verify a, a bunch of sites. And then you can just pick which ones you want to show up in here. So, and then there's a the little pencil for the, uh, uh, go ahead, you see, edit channel navigation, your channel settings. And... Uh, and then you have your things where you edit your different things. Just so you just click this thing at, on each channel. And uh, so you see I've got featured content, latest activity, or latest upload. Okay. And uh, so 
pick I usually have latest upload, but latest activity shows if you've added any new stuff or like shows your upcoming shows. That's why it's a little bit different from latest upload. Latest upload would not have shown my YouTube, my Bluetooth Jubilee upcoming show, which is what this is the icon for. It's an upcoming show because that's so that appears because latest activity was that I added this event, this uh, live streaming live event to my thing. If I had latest upload, my previous Bluetooth Jubilee show would have come up or the Pixlr editor tutorial that I did last week. So would have been highlighted here instead. All right. So uh, anyway, so this is likely beyond the scope of what this was. I just thought I'd first show how I have the channel laid out. But uh, then I could get into what each one of these playlists is about in a bit. But let's take a break from that. And uh, so I've talked enough about myself. Why don't you talk about me for a while? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't I talk about? <laughs> yeah. I could probably do that because there's a lot that people don't know about Terry from his Blue Juice Jubilee variety show and everything. We're learning a lot of stuff about what you can do. Ah, oh, he's like he's infiltrating my show with his Blue Juice. But uh, no brand, no brand positioning around here. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, and Andrew said teaching people to relax and have fun is some of the most important stuff we one can teach another and I agree to that and that's partially why I am not intimidated by this this camera or the microphone or whatever I just really don't care I mean you know to a to major degree I am unmoved and then really unperturbed by what I look like what I sound like and all that stuff and as hopefully what I have to say and what I'm my relative thinking concerning these subjects that makes the biggest difference in what I know and what I deliver. And that's the same thing with Terry. He's got so much stuff packed into his brain. So yes, I could talk about Terry for a while. But uh, <laughs> one of the subjects regarding all of this is the use of YouTube as an SEO thing. Now, that leads me into two different concepts. First of all, using it in the first place to get SEO results. I mean, if I want SEO results, I go to YouTube and the website and Google Plus first. That combination, I, I say, unless you want to do those things, don't talk to me about SEO because you can SEO the heck out of your website and not get the kind of results you can by doing some very simple things with video in YouTube and Google Plus. But the second thing is SEO as a concept is less and less and less important and I'm gonna get all kinds of stuff handed to me on platters to blow up in my face for saying that but the issue is this when we are doing hangout videos and we are doing communicative videos and we are doing interactive uh, video productions such as we are right now with a stream of commenters live this is what's called interaction and what Terry described with his YouTube channel, he, he did not talk about thousands and thousands of viewers. He talked about relevant, concentrated network of followers that actually interact with him. And that is what is going to build your business. Uh, we recently, about a month ago, had Jimbo Marshall on our show. And afterwards, in the green room, he made a comment. And he said, if you've got a couple hundred people, you can make a you can make a lifestyle business you can earn a living with a couple of hundred focused people now I'd like to know how to do that and uh, get better at it but the point is that your income and relative value in exchange bringing back uh, income into your pocket is directly correlative to how great the relationships are so if you if you build good relationships and just a few of them let them build up they are way more value than having thousands of people and that's that's probably my whole message well for this entire se series of hangouts the whole message is the relationship is what matters mm -hmm. so Definitely. I'd like to hand it back to you because I'm out of breath <laughs> <laughs> well and one way you can really help nurture relationships is by knowing you know how 
some of your topics are interesting to one group of people and other topics are interesting to other groups. And so rather than having a video channel uh, on YouTube that's just all of your videos clumped into one massive, long, endless stream, and they're on all different subjects, that's where the playlists become really, really great. And uh, you, uh, let's see, uh, if I can bring up my video manager thing. I'm just going to open this before I, before I start sharing. Okay, by the way, uh, Tim Longwell is saying hello, and he's visiting uh -huh. us from our audience. And he was on our program, what well, was it? It was just uh, two weeks ago. Was that two weeks ago or was that last week? And that we was talked, last week. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm getting run over by my blank spaces in my mind. <laughs> Tim Longwell did a really good job of introducing us to circles and talking about circles. And one thing that has changed since last week, as Andrew Hatchett posted in his community, is that uh, sharing of circles is now waxed. They have uh, Google has eliminated that option to share circles, and I'm sure it's because of the the spammy effect of what's going on and the irrelevance of sharing circles versus more personal one-on-one -on -one and gradual building and you know more direct sharing, and that that is why they probably reinforced that. So. Sharing of circles is gone. One of the main changes from last week in Tim Tim Longwell's uh, discussion. Go ahead, Terry. Yeah, and uh, that a new thing is in is X collections at Google right. Plus, but they've taken as Andrew was pointing out. A lot of people go into their channel now to edit it. They'll have a big blue notice telling them that the collections feature has been taken away, and everybody's going to go. Oh no, the collections feature has been taken away. Nobody even knew the collections feature even existed. That's why they took it away. Nobody ever used it. It was a, uh, you know, it was sort of it was sort of redundant because it's it was basically just another way of making playlists. And if you're already making playlists of different types of videos in different categories, then why have the collections? I don't know. But uh so that but collections let you have kind of uh, subscribers is a way of clumping your subscriptions together into different categories so you could instead of having this huge huge row of subscriptions you could just have the one and uh, and it didn't really pan over into other like like uh, smart TV sets Roku boxes stuff like that that showed the playlists the list or uh, and in the subscriptions it didn't pan over into that anyway. You still just saw the endless stream. So it was something that very few people even knew existed, and they just ended that because nobody was using it. Uh, so, uh, did you see the comment from Andrew Hatchett about the YouTube question? That was the one I'm talking about. Oh. It was about collections, uh, yeah, YouTube collections. It. Yep. Okay, and I'm, those just, were, I'm just catching up with my day here. Yep, and those were collections of, uh, of subscribers that you could oh, yeah, put into it. a category. And uh, subscriptions, I mean, of subscriptions you could put into a category. Uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen and uh, of the playlist thing. Uh, playlists are super valuable, and not all of them have to be made public on your uh, on your channel. So you can have personalized playlists that you only you see, like my flute playlist, for instance. I don't bother other people with my flute playlist. Uh, although I do make it visible in the list on the left, okay, and then there's some programming ones that are just about me, stuff that I know is just so darn niche, <laughs> put it on the playlist, and, uh, but uh, anyhow, um, the playlist is, is just so valuable, and I'm going to switch over to the screen share so you can see what I'm, some of what I did here. All righty. Glenn Jewett and Jeremy Murphy have joined us. Cool. Uh, oh, so this is a playlist listing. And I see I just made Blue Juice Jubilee Variety Show playlist. Some Lightworks highlights of because I'm learning how to use the Lightworks video editor. But this is not put in my channel list. It's not in any of my other things. It's just it's a personal list because I'm learning Lightworks. And maybe once I get enough videos in there, more than three, that it's worthwhile sharing as a public list, then maybe I'll do that. You know, uh, voice meter tutorials has grown at 17, and so that's now public. Uh, my rural intelligence tutorials; these are 
private tutorials, just a whole one video, the tutorial I made just for my clients at Rural Intelligence to show them how to use the software that we have as our back end. So you see, I so, so this is where you make playlists. And to get here, you go to your little uh, picture, you click on your picture, and you click on where it says Creator Studio, okay? And that's what opens up the uh, the Creator Studio window. And then you click on the video manager here on the left, and you would highlight, click on playlists, and that's what takes you into the playlist editor, okay? Where you actually create a playlist. You not only can create the playlist, you can also uh, click on it, and it takes you into the just back to the playlist thing. But you can do this from your little drop down listing over here too. Okay, takes you in, and then you can click on the more thing to go. How you're going to move it around? You really don't need. You can move to the top and bottom real quick. You can add and edit notes. You can set as a the thumbnail. Like you see, my thumbnail is this first one was my first blue juice variety show but i could set any of these others as the thumbnail at the top okay and, or i can delete the item from the playlist which does not delete the video it just deletes it from the playlist okay so let's go back again though to the thing where you create playlists so that was playlist editing and remember to add something to a playlist you can simply go watch the video and click on the share button so let's see uh i'll just go into obs video here to show you and you can add videos from the add videos button but this is so much easier i just go watch the video and then down here it says add to and uh and you click on that and select which playlist you're going to add it to okay so uh uh, so anyway, creating a new playlist, click this button. I'll go ahead and click it so that you can see. Test. And you select whether it's going to be public, unlisted, or private. Unlisted means it can be shared with other people, just like an unlisted video, but it doesn't show up in the search of YouTube search. Okay? Private means you can just only people that have uh, an email from you sent from YouTube can watch this thing because it sends them an encoded uh, link that's got special coding that so only they can really open that thing unlisted means anybody that's got the link can can view it but unlisted is great for client videos where you got to send it to a six or seven or eight people at a company to watch the video so I make it unlisted and then they can all see it. I don't have to be bothered. Uh, the private only allows, I think, up to 10 invitations. All right, so you make it, in this case, public, you create, and it takes you in here. You can then go and you can add a, uh, oh, this is, this will take on whatever the first video you add will take on that thumbnail. But as I showed you, you can change the thumbnail. You can click on share, you can do your playlist settings, and you can add videos. This is playlist settings, just lets you change from public to unlisted, for instance. Let's you change the ordering from manual, where you actually drag the items around, or in order of most popular, the date added, or the published date. Um, you can uh, set as an official series, which uh, it's, it's just, uh, it means that this video is part of that playlist, and that's it. So it, it, it has to do with how YouTube might, might include you in search results. Uh, allowing embedding lets people actually embed your playlist. Not necessarily the video, but the playlist, because you still have control over the vid on a video-by-video -video basis whether you allow the video embedded, but this allows people to embed your playlist into their website so they can show off your playlist and give people access to your whole playlist. And uh, I never check add new videos to the top of playlist. I always want them to come in at the bottom because generally speaking, I have mine in chronological order. But if you do it in reverse chronological, then click on that, okay? And uh, so that's why that's would how anybody, all that is done. Let, let me wrap my brain around this. Why mm -hmm. would anybody create a video series in reverse chronological order? 
say I wanted people to have the most recent game show at the top, uh, and then the next oh, most it. recent game show second. That would be reverse chronological. Okay, that's good. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and you can also put in auto add and define rules of when videos are automatically added to this playlist. So you can create some pretty crazy uh, rules, like the title contains a certain word. Like if I could have the title, I could tell if it contains blue juice, then I add it immediately automatically to the blue juice jan jubilee playlist. See? Or the description can contain a certain terms, like uh, a variety show for my for my blue juice jubilee. They always have those words in the description. Or you can have a certain tag. Anything with this tag that's in your video winds up in this playlist. Pretty neat, huh? So that way you're not having to worry about going to watch the video and add it manually. It's going to be thrown in there all by itself. A feature I really is pretty lame because I don't take much advantage of that. I should. Okay. So we're, we're getting a lot of comments and uh, people are saying, I, I think it's not so much that they have questions. I think that you're handing them so much uh, show know-how uh, information that it's like, oh my God, I'm watching all these things. And I didn't know they existed. So it's it's a good enough uh, introduction to what YouTube has to offer. And mm -hmm. you probably invited a lot of calls for people to hit you up for some lessons on how to use YouTube. <laughs> yeah. um, a, few qu a few statements, though, relative to... Uh, what we were talking about earlier and SEO because Glenn Jewett is the champ of SEO and uh, he said the the result is an improved results from search SEO has expanded the toolkit to include semantic content links etc so he makes a very good point there that search has changed changed because of work in SEO and uh, Bill Graham kind of reflects probably more my spirit of the things uh, Bill says relevant relationships are far more useful than hordes of faceless views so that's like the comparison of Facebook to Google Plus to me and uh, the attitude between the two so I'm, I'm definitely into the real real one-on-one -on -one relationship building and then Carmen Mandich said uh, the most important thing that we should all take away from today Roland Takaoka, you're a natural, so you always look good and sound good. <laughs> Thank you, Carmen. Thank you. Wait, that wasn't the most important thing she said. She said, you have no yeah, idea how helpful this is for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Terry Lee Britton. I added some of the thank yous because I knew what she meant. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, you're welcome, Carmen. <laughs> So, you know, as you can see, this Mother's Day weekend, we're kind of jiving around. But luckily, we've got uh, Terry with a good experience in the YouTube works that can hand you stuff of value. And so that's that was a good takeaway for today, if nothing else. And, uh, you know, if I we were to go, was there anything else you wanted to add, Terry, to what you've been delivering? Well, uh, I guess I probably should show a little bit of how to actually dive into a channel and change the settings. And, um, well, yeah. Absolutely. One, yeah. Um, so, let me go ahead and share the screen again. Here we go. Pick the right one. Da, 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 da. Okay. All right. So, I'll be... The Terry's Tech Show archives is the one that I'm going to, uh, you know, change. So first you have these little buttons, these up and down buttons next to the pencil. And what these do is they change the position in the list. So I can, I can decide I want Terry's live conceptual music to be ahead of this. So I just click this and see they swap places. Or I can say, ah, what a dumb, uh, what a dumb move. Put that back. And there you go. Swaps places. So every time you push it, it, it the down button, it moves it down another notch. So I can move it down and then go here, move it down again. Okay. And so that's, that's what that does. And by the way, this shows up once you start editing your channel and you, you've edited this first part up here. And clicked on this edit links and edit channel art you see uh, 
it gets it walk starts getting through a walkthrough that shows up in the channel tips thing of what to do next. So you can actually be walked through the whole process of getting these different layers involved. When you have none, you got to do, and I don't even remember what the trick is right now, but you, you get to where at the very bottom, when you have less than 10, you get a add a, uh, add a category or add a, uh, a strip or something. I forget now what it says. It says add, basically it's an add button and that's what adds in the next thing that you're going to put in. So when you click on the edit button, here's where you have content, layout, choose the playlist, and um, so here you have the, uh, you, this is where you find, find your playlists, see where you're going to get it from. So I'm getting my playlist from my playlist. Now look, at I can put in a playlist URL of somebody else's playlist too. It doesn't have to be my own playlist. I could have a channel that features other people's playlists as a way of becoming a curator for, for uh, my subscribers, where I'm showing them the best stuff from a lot of, from some of my heroes, playlists by some of my heroes out there on YouTube are producing stellar content. Because if I haven't produced huge playlists yet myself, because I haven't made a lot of my own content yet, that does not stop you from making a gorgeous channel with tons and tons of resources on it for people. I just happen to be pretty prolific in making my own content over the last few years. And so I have a lot to throw in myself. But you can have just as abundant a, pl a channel as mine by going here and instead of saying my playlist say enter playlist url and now you just click the playlist url that you get from that person's channel and their playlist and uh punch it in there and hit add and bingo you got it going on okay if you're in your own playlist you click on my playlist and then it shows you a list of your playlists okay and you select which one is going to take this slot. And then you decide whether it's going to be just that one single playlist or look at all these different options, all kinds of options. And just kind of go through and try them out because you can have a single playlist. In my case, it's a you know what they call single playlist, meaning one of my playlists. And that's when this shows up of choose a playlist. If I picked a different thing like upcoming events, then it simply changes it to upcoming events feature, which is what I have at the tip top. Okay, that's my up, the upcoming events. Okay, uh, let's see, get back down here. And popular uploads, liked videos. You can show what videos you've liked recently, which ones you've posted, what's live right now can be in this slot. So, and again, this slot could be anywhere. It could be at the top, it could be at the bottom, it could be anywhere. Um, now you also, you'll see that I have also the multiple playlists slot I used in these others and I shared with you is up here. This is other videos is a multiple playlists, uh, slot. Okay. And, uh, so that's, I just ch chose that multiple playlists instead of single and get the idea and posted playlists are ones that you've got posted, uh, so you can have a list of all the ones that you got posted. The, mind you, it only is going to show so many, like the side scroller just shows so many, and then you get to a view seven more, and then it just takes you to the playlist itself, uh, which is under the playlist button here. Um, same thing if I hit show more here for my other videos, because I'm showing my playlist. It shows so many, and then it, uh, well, I don't have that many, extras here but uh but then it make takes you to the other um it takes you to the playlist okay so you know uh, that brings that brings to yes. mind Terry that mm -hmm. uh up on the top there uh there are the uh the menu items of Terry Lee Britton videos mm -hmm. playlists channels discussion and about and one mm -hmm. of these days probably not today but one of these these days we probably should explore those completely and especially go to the videos and the how do we edit the videos. I know we kind of touched on it before, 
but there's a lot of a lot of intricate moves in, involved with that. So mm -hmm. uh, people should take their time and navigate through that and call Terry or me if you have questions on how to navigate through. And uh, here's where you have the vertical list versus the scroller, side scroller, horizontal list. See, so there's a side scroller horizontal versus a vertical list. Okay, neat, huh? And so you can pick either one. You so, can also, yeah. I'm sorry, I had a w one last question regarding this. Mm -hmm. uh, with HOAs, Hangouts, they're automatically published to YouTube. Let's say you have two streams of videos. Like I've, if I had Saturday Morning Marketing Smarties and then I had a some other kind of a show on a different day, can you arrange it so they automatically upload to the right channel or the right collection? Yes. That's so it's where all controllable. You can, you can set it up so they, they'll automatically load into the right group. Exactly. That's in here. Like here's this this playlist here. Um, let's see. Okay, under new playlists. Remember, I showed the. Uh, let's see if I can just edit this this one here. Uh, the like videos, blue do stupidly. Okay, so here's the playlist. Playlist settings. Auto add. So you go to your playlist, playlist settings, click on the auto add, and this is where you add the rule. This is where your title, description, or tag contains something special that you have in all of those Hangouts. And then when you finish with the Hangout, as soon as it's done on YouTube, in fact, probably even while it's still live, yeah, I'm sure, while it's still, even while it's still live, it'll... As soon as you get that thing started, it will show up in, in that playlist. Excellent. Isn't that cool? That is great. So the title, description, or the tag, and you get automation. So guess what, Terry? And, and by the way, you can add that rule for uh, in another playlist for the same video, so that video will show up in two playlists. Ah, very good. Okay. All right. We, we, we just managed to to knock out forty eight minutes of our hour, letting you just turning you loose with your knowledge of uh, YouTube and commenting around it. I think that's pretty good. Uh, maybe we can discuss briefly uh, the the use of because because I am not totally object to SEO. I think the best SEO is video, Google Plus, and a website done. Mod with moderate, you know, containment right across the board, and not even a, intense, intensely SEOing it, but doing the view things right. And how do you feel about you know videos in SEO and producing a search one, search page one search results and so forth? Well, if you optimize your video uh, and get all your tags and descriptions going on. Uh, where they're following best practices and learning from other people who are very successful in getting their videos at the top for your keywords, then you will enjoy massive numbers of views. Okay, there's just no doubt about it. You will you will definitely go. Oh my gosh! I, everybody watches my video. I am so famous. I just don't believe it. And uh, I have one video. That's got six hundred thousand something views, and uh, let's see. I'll, I'll tell you the exact amount. Here I am searching for it. I could have just sorted. One second, <laughs> I got it in grid mode. Change the list. Oh, I may as well show you this. In fact, um, yeah, let me go back to uh, now. Uh, now I may I may freeze up. As I'm doing this, well, if you freeze up, I'll take over and talk about my experience with SEO and video. Oh, I don't mean freeze up like, like that bad. <laughs> it's, oh, that's know. right. It's pretty warm in your your neighborhood right now. So. Oh yeah, yeah. There's no freezing going on. So up here, I'm on my uh, videos list, and it shows I've got it sorted by date added, newest to oldest right now, and I'm grid mode. 
okay? I could also sort it by most popular. And then, bingo. And you'll see this is the one with 649,000 views. Gosh, it was 613 just a couple of days ago. I get like 10,000 views a week or more. And it's been up for two years. But it's... Uh, it's not only been optimized, but I am so into responding to my people's questions that I have thousands and thousands of comments on this thing, and I've responded to every single one of them. So you go YouTube rewards interaction. And so I had no idea that this would become so popular. I was like one of the, you know, on page two or three of the search for a year and then all of a sudden I don't know what happened exactly but I was always attentive to my audience I did optimize it more because somebody remixed my video because it's a Creative Commons video and they were getting more views of my video than I was getting all they put wow. on, they just put a header and a trail trailer at the end you know beginning and ending of their branding stuff the beginning and ending of my video and it's allowed because I'm Creative Commons and they gave me the attribution and all that so people could click the attribution and see the original. And uh, I think that, that their little maneuver actually wound up helping my own SEO. So uh, because more people were watching this video that was actually by me. So I don't know. Anyhow, about a year ago, it just suddenly jumped up and then I got on the first position for a search not just for cam studio tutorial which it was it did get that first position within six months or so once i'd optimized it but then it just even even for cam studio and what it typed in cam studio and i was number one so that number one position just like with google search regular search if you're getting if you can hold that number one position you've got a you got gold mine right there because that is the first thing that the massive huge majority of people click on that first result and so uh so you would just wind up with being very popular now again look at what this is about it's about a screen recording software that's free and shows it's 40 minute tutorial you know and a lot of people comment one comment i get often is because I say, uh, now as quick as quickly as possible, I'm going to go through the settings on Cam Studio, and it's a 40 minute video, so they're kind of going, yeah, as quickly as possible, yeah, right. So, uh, but anyhow, that got me up there, and as you see, I have others that are in the hundred thousands and fifty thousands, so in the tens of thousands, uh, and most of these have to do with Cam Studio because you. YouTube has decided I'm a cam, the Cam Studio guy now, I guess. And so I wind up in the searches for Cam Studio, and I wind up in the sidebar, the suggested videos um, for anybody that does that's watching any Cam Studio video sees me in the in the suggested videos list. Uh, it's good to have something that's consistent between all your videos to kind of tie them together so that they show up in that suggested videos list. So me having... The words Cam Studio 2.7 and the words how to and the words tutorial in every single one of these can tie them together so that they show up all as a clump in the suggested videos list. And so I get a lot of clicks from the suggested videos too. Uh, people put in screen recording software, for instance, or screen capture software, I show up in their suggested videos list because screen capture is in one of my tags. Okay. So you've just handed people so many SEO clues as far as the title of their, simply the title of their videos. But I mean, you, you can re reinforce this by adding to your description and the various mm -hmm. tags and so forth. But yep. um, while we're speaking of this, uh, Andrew Hatchett mentions, get the video SEO right. And when embedded on a website, it brings its own SEO with it and enhances the website SEO by doing so. Not mm -hmm. only does it do this, uh, when, when you develop a, a YouTube SEO video, you know, for the purposes of SEO, and it's it's linked, the YouTube channel is linked to your, your 
website to verify a Google Plus page, business page, with the website associated with that, and these th three things are tied together, that gives the power of all of your SEO an extra boost. That's phenomenal. And one of the things that people do not know about video is that it's liked so much by Google that if you have a video and another company that's actually been in business longer and has more media and various things happening and may be the previous authority, if you have a video, there's a possibility you will be with them or above them in the Google search results just because you have a video. Now, I say that with hesitation because even though you might be able to find yourself on page one, you dang better, better deserve to be on page one. In other words, have a good, quali good quality product, good quality service, and back up what you're saying and be 100%. Deserve to be on page one before you find yourself on page one. And that's yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing to me how many uh, searches I've done for how-to videos that I wound up that the page one number one link is full of misinformation. So, you yeah. if you find if you find one of those with misinformation on it, just get the information on how they're, you know, how they titled their video, how they tagged it, how they because you can use that VidX uh, Vision uh, tool to get the tags. Uh, look at their description you know, copy a lot of what they did right and into your own correct video that's actually got the correct information in it. And you will sit around sit around for six months and all of a sudden, boom, you're at the top spot. Because you did it on a subject that's already worthy of getting a top spot. You used the right types of keywords. You know, your keywords that you found that other video from your search, you found an erroneous video from your search. <laughs> and so now make the corrected version with similar keywords that you use to search, similar tags, similar info in the description, and a clear, not frilly, not cute um, headline. And and YouTube will recognize that you've done something right and put you at the top too. And once you're at the top, then of course that's giving cred to your own to your website uh, that you've listed. Uh, and remember, you can search, you can put in the top here, like I, I'm good to the campstudio.org folks. I put the link to Camp Studio right in my description. You can have as many links as you want in here. Look what I do to my descriptions. I always say, be crazy about your descriptions. Put as much as you can in there, and uh, you know. This is huge, long, and I did not run out. They didn't give me a warning, but it's even got the text version of the script of the instructions I have in this video, and uh, and lots of links to other tools and and to other websites of mine and all that stuff. So you don't you don't have to rely on annotations or cards to get links to you, okay, or the links on your channel to get links to your website properties. You can put them right in the description of each one of your videos. So uh, and what you're really discussing and handing the people, even though you know, I'm gonna I'm going to white box you so that comes back up. Hang on. Okay. What you're really talking about when you uh, show people this is that it's it's not just about being on page one. So search engine optimization will get you on page one if done properly, but if you do the work that you're describing, you are actually putting in the work that makes you as relevant as possible. And when you know what you're doing and then you put that in the description and then you go through the various details of, uh, of attending to your, uh, your tags, your content, your titling, and then adjusting your transcript on your video and all these things, then you actually are relevant and you deserve to be on page one. And that's what search engine results are all about. Yeah. That's really what they are. But yeah. so often people want to, you know, have a service, throw together a weird website of some kind, and say, "I oh, let's see now. I'll ha hire a, an SEO guy," and they could get results and they could get traffic. Will they get business? That depends upon their business and how good they follow up. So it all starts. It all starts with square one. Your product or your service has to be the best. Yeah, but then. 
make sure you communicate that it's the best and a good fit for exactly. that person. And that's what marketing really is. Marketing is not confusing people into doing something that you want them to do. It's not manipulative. Marketing in the correct sense of the word is all about helping people find that you are the solution to their problem, that you actually do provide them with a solution to a problem they have. And you, so by making yourself findable, you are helping more people. And so if, as long as your attitude is about helping others, you will find all this comes naturally because you will always be searching your mind, trying to think of how you can better help them. And then you will come up with the answers to your marketing enigmas automatically because you'll be in the shower and it'll hit you. Oh, I could make better tags. <laughs> like, you know, I, I, I can't remember now. Did I, did I pay you to say that? <laughs> no. I, I can't remember. No, Terry, it's perfect. It's perfect what you're saying. It's like what I'm uh, trying to get out of my mouth every single week about relevance and about, you know, being the best you can be about giving this entire series is based on the concept of giving first. And mm -hmm. that's why we don't monetize in the program. And that's why we just talk about teaching people the basics that they can take away from the program, learn and do something that will benefit them now. So that's, yeah. that's why I'm having such a good time doing it. And thank you very much for being with us on this. But uh, our hour is out, we're two minutes over time. So I'm going to use your uh, closure there as my uh, send off to say I hope you guys had a nice hour with us. I hope you had some fun and maybe some laughs too. Uh, thank you very much for the comments. Thank you, Terry, for contributing your uh, your content in the show. It's really been a good learning experience for everybody. And so to the Saturday morning marketing smarties and the smarties everywhere around the world, wherever you're tuning in from, thank you very much for being with us. And uh, we'll see you very soon, okay? Happy Mother's Day. See ya. <laughs>